It's been more than half a year now since I officially switched over to Arch Linux as my main operating system. And in this episode, I want to give you the good and the bad. Am I going to stick with it? Ooh, Arch is the best. Arch, by the way, you're a liar and a fraud. I wrote a whole list here with all the pros and cons I've been experiencing. It's actually, there's nothing on this. I didn't learn how to write yet. I'm one of those losers that spend a majority of their lifetime running Windows as their main operating system. And this was before I got into web development. It was mainly because I was playing a bunch of online games. I was really into StarCraft, League, um, but after I got into web development, it just was an absolute nightmare getting anything done. So I bought myself a MacBook Pro. This is the 2019 version. And this is just such a fantastic device. And I highly prefer this over my desktop windows. But the problem was that with this, you didn't really have any ports or anything and setting it up to running like streams, potentially filming videos as well. And I have like 20 different cables that's plugged into my desktop PC. So this just seemed a little bit like a nightmare, but to this day, I still develop on this. I still write a bunch of code on this, even though it's like a six year old device now, but I knew I wanted a change throughout these years. I also was running Ubuntu and my experience there was really great, but I wanted something. I wanted to feel something. So I installed Arch Linux seven months ago and let's talk about what's great and what's not. I should probably start this with some pros before the Archies crucify me. One thing I absolutely love about running Arch is the window tile management system. It's so easy to move things around. One thing that is just a nightmare in Windows and on Mac is that you have to do all this window dragging. Oh, let me position this here. Let me put this here. And it's just so hard to keep track of everything. With this, you have one command, you have the command key, and then you just touch a button. So if I want a terminal, I can do command T and I can do that a couple of times to pull up multiple windows. I can do command Q to close it and I have it set up. So when I do command A, I can just pull up whatever, like Chrome or Firefox. And this is super easy. It's also set up so it uses NeoVim bindings. So if I hold command shift, and then I can do the JKL keys, right? I can just simply move them left and right or down or up. And this is fantastic, right? It makes it really easy. Um, I also have it set so I can move it with the number keys. So if I do command shift one, I can just move it to this other window here where I'm running OBS. Command shift two runs it back to the main window. So that's fantastic. Now you might want another window where you want to run something else. Uh, I can simply do command and window three, and that just puts it on window two there. So if I open something else up here, let's say I want to run NeoVim, right? I go on NeoVim, but I want to go back to where I had the browser and the terminal, command two, and I'm back here, command three, back in NeoVim. I never found anything that had this level of just smoothness and nice animations and a good experience. I heard people say there's stuff on Mac and, and whatnot, but I haven't tried it, so I can't really say. But this is one of the biggest pros I can think of. Another big pro I can think of is just how fast this works. Compared to my Windows, compared to my Mac, this runs so, so quick. When I boot it up, it literally takes a couple of seconds, and the amount of resources that th this uses is, is so, so little. As you can see, my CPU is standing at 6% and I also have OBS running here in the background and it barely uses any GPU, barely uses any RAM. It's just really fast and really efficient. Another thing is that you can customize it any way you want. As you can see, this is using uh, HyperDots. I might check out Omarki by uh, DHH. That seems like a pretty cool thing, but everything is customizable here, as you can see. Uh, I was like, it's not working now. See, it's not showing the preview. And that's kind of one thing that you also experience with uh, Arch. Some things just go, just break completely and you have no idea why. But look at that. How cool is that? I can switch over uh, to all these wallpapers and everything adjusts as well. So the terminal you can set up. So NeoVim also changes the color schemes with it. But pretty much everything that you see here from the way bar down here to the file explorer can all be customized. And you cannot really say that for Windows nor with Mac. 
And the last big pro I can think of is that it just works really well for web development or programming in general. Uh, because you are at the end of the day just running Linux. So like seeding into stuff, right? You can touch, make directories, do a little funny RM, RF here and remove your whole project base. Um, it just works. Installing Node, installing anything that you need pretty much is a smooth experience. Now there's different like package managers like Pac-Man uh, and then you have Our as well, I believe it's called. And this is for like community packages. Um, it's, it's been a really good experience. Okay, enough with the fun stuff, talk nasty. Now Arch essentially starts to fall apart as soon as you try to do anything other than programming. First of all, I use these AirPod Pros as like my headphones and I also have like Sony XM4s and stuff like that, but I feel like those make my head really hot and it just gets tight. These are pretty comfortable and for like the audio quality, it's fantastic. Now when I go on the Mac, I open these things and put it in my ears and it just automatically connects. If I switch over to my Mac, it does it there too. It's fantastic. On Windows, not the best experience, but not the worst. You need to open it. I need to pull up like the Bluetooth thingy and it just like you just do the connect on it on Windows and it connects to it. On Arch, I opened it. I put it in my ears. Check this out. I hit connect. It, it does the connection sound on it, so you're like, oh, okay, it connected. But it doesn't show that it connected. And then when I try to connect to it, it doesn't. So what you have to do is remove it and then search for it, and then you can connect to it. And this happens to so many Bluetooth devices. And I looked into this far too long that I stopped caring about it for different things like keyboards, uh, AirPods, mouses. Um, I don't know why it does that and it just grinds my gears. Another huge problem I have is in my, the browsers, whether I use Firefox or Chrome, the screen just starts flashing in a weird way. I guess it's not doing it now. Sometimes it has a good day and it just doesn't do it at all. And sometimes it just constantly does it for the whole day and it's really frustrating. Um, let me see if I can get in here and kind of show this. Maybe if I type something out, it'll start doing weird flashes. See, look how the nap bar just starts disappearing. Sometimes it completely just shows the desktop background uh, and it's, it gets really annoying and really difficult to actually develop something. And I, I don't know again if it's the NVIDIA drivers or whatnot, uh, but sometimes I move my mouse around and I just get a bunch of dead pixels popping up. Uh, so I assume it's the NVIDIA drive. See, did you see that flash? Jesus, PTSD, I don't want any of that. Um, another thing that is quite annoying is scaling. Usually it doesn't get it correctly all the time. Sometimes it's, it's extremely large in the browser, but it looks really well in other places. And then you just have to like go down this whole route of trying to configure everything to be the proper size. And then you just add, see the flash, stop it. Um, you, it just ends up taking your whole day just trying to make everything look decent. And that's never really a problem with Mac or Windows. Now I found a solution that you can do to actually kind of fix this. So this is why I think it's actually the, the Nvidia drivers that usually can cause a lot of these problems. If I go here and disable uh, acceleration or whatever it's called, let me search GPU. And it's usually when I'm typing as well, you get these weird flashes all the time. Uh, acceleration. So I have graphics acceleration here. If I turn it off and relaunch this, but if I disable that, then everything just works so poorly for some reason. And I don't know why, but if I disable like GPU acceleration on the Mac or on the Windows, it still works pretty fine. But here it's just almost unusable. And this is on every website pretty much. Like if I go here and try to drag this, like, look at that, that's horrendous. And if I go back and turn this on, you're just gonna see how Look, like even the bloody browser is lagging. Uh, GPU. Why did they rename this? Turn this back on and look at that. It's just everything works super smoothly again. Now this still can be all fine and bearable, but for me personally, I also do video editing, right? I make YouTube videos. I need to edit thumbnails and all that other stuff. So try opening up Photoshop for me on Arch. I'll, I'll wait. 
matter of fact, try Affinity if you really prefer that. That's what I thought. You can't. So it's quite a shame uh, if you want to do like light gaming as well, like you want to play a game of League or whatever. There's just like no way to do that. And I'm not going to use like I'm either going to use Photoshop or Affinity to edit. And there's just no support for any of that stuff. Uh, which sucks. Mainly edit in DaVinci Resolve anyway, and there is an hour package out here, but this is the fifth day I'm trying to get this working, and it's still not working. If you want to go and try the list here with the NVIDIA drivers and whatnot, it's like a whole rabbit hole that you have to go down to just get this up and running. And I'm just a bit tired of just doing stuff that doesn't actually make me too, too productive. Like in the last couple of months, I wanted to get a bit more into streaming and I found these really cool tools like the Restream you have and there's one called Stream Elements Live or something like that. And it's super cool because you can like see chat and you can also integrate multiple like streaming providers. So you could do Twitch, YouTube, X, whatever you want. And that's just like, it's always I end up uh, in the scenario where I find a cool little thing that I want to download and there's just it's just not available on Arch right it's mainly either Windows or Mac support and that's really really frustrating and then you have to go down the rabbit hole of going on R and then do SMTP live restream thing and then you go on the thing and then you find it and then it's not like people are not working on it anymore it's just this one person that's been kind of building it out but I tried it and it like crashes every two seconds and it's just it's not been a great experience oh look it's flashing again god damn it but yeah overall it's been great have you seen my little uh matrix animation here pretty cool will I stick with arch will I switch over for now I'm still gonna stick with this I do like a lot of things about it still. I do feel like I'm really efficient with programming on it. And currently the way I have this set up, it's, it's super easy for me to film. OBS is still working, thankfully, so that's great. Um, but I am considering going down and investing in a little Mac Mini or something like that, hooking that up here uh, because the price value and the price for the value is just so fantastic, I think. It's like 400 or 500 dollars for a little box that's that's pretty efficient um and that way i can do like the multi-streaming and everything uh, so i'm considering that what do you think i should do let me know down in the comments uh like this episode drop a little sub that's really appreciated and if you leave a negative comment i'll delete it thank you <laughs>